Ding, ding. Oh my god. Ding, 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 ding. ding. I wasn't ready for all that. Better wake you up somehow. Uh, Calm the sun. Welcome back to the Jen and Julian podcast. All my sons. <laughs> Hope so your day loud. is going well. It was so loud. It's, it's the beauty of a, of a mixer board. <laughs> you can just ramp up the volume of life. That was a lot. But I'm here. Hmm. Hello. This episode is brought to you by Direct TV Now. Guys, what a better way to watch TV over the internet than Direct TV Now. Guys, you hop on your phone, you can connect it to Roku, Apple TV. You can watch it straight on your TV, or you can watch it on your phone around the house. Mm-hmm. The starting package of $35 gets you 60 live TV channels on your phone. And if you go up to the top package, you get up to 120 channels. Go to directtvnow.com. That's D-I-R-E-C-T-V now.com. Check it out. It's a really great deal, and it's going to change your TV watching life. Also, guys, Quip, when it comes to your health, Brushing your teeth is one of the most important things that you can do. Might as well do it with Quip in style, easy to use, small form factor. Guys, Quip is an electric toothbrush that packs just the right amount of vibrations into a slimmer design at the fraction of the cost of the bulkier traditional electronic toothbrushes. Right now, Quip uh, Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash Jenna Julian right now, you will get your first refill pack for free or click the link in the description. Guys, that's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash Jenna Julian. It's really cool, actually. Let me check it out. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. I was just thinking about how with DirecTV Now, you could watch however many episodes there are of Oak Island. When I realized the other day how many episodes of that show I've watched... And have been bamboozled by it infuriated me. You watch the show and every single time they clickbait you and you click on it the next time, every I single do. time. No, I do. They're like, what are they gonna uncover it? <laughs> this is tied to some crazy story. For it could Rick mean and that human, <laughs> human remains are actually gonna be found this episode, and then it's just nothing. Every time it's nothing. It's so bad. You get debated every it's time. so bad. I know, but they like there's like little enough stuff happening where you're like, okay, next time is going to be the one where they, they break into the chapel vault and they get to see what's in there. Oh, they found a piece of parchment. Oh, man, this is going to be good. And then, no. And then nothing happens. No. Rick and Marty Lagina should start a YouTube channel because they would be the best clickbaiters around. Well, and I saw that one of them is on a new treasure hunting show, like looking for Confederate gold or something in Lake Michigan. I don't even, I don't even know. But I was like, oh, like, what are you like a treasure hunter now? I thought you were devoted to Oak Island. Am I supposed to lose my my loyalty to Oak Island now? He's I'm devoted to making money off of your curiosity. <laughs> I hate it. That's I'm so curious. To. There's so much money to be made off of my curiosity. I'm feeling very sad. The real treasure is our eyes, isn't it? Your the treasure is, I've just unlocked is the thirty five dollars per month you're going to pay to Direct TV now, and never <laughs> ever find treasure guys, from watching that guys, show. Guys, I've actually discovered. Luckily, you'll have a lot of other channels to I've watch. I've discovered the what's buried on Oak Island. Okay, it's the money that that they can make <clears throat> off of our eyeballs. <laughs> just. It's it's like it's futuristic not, money that yeah, you're paying them. It's not Templar gold. It's not ancient relics. The the series finale, they're just going to be like, and to finally reveal <laughs> what we've been looking for on Oak Island, it is all of your money that you've been paying us. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Peace. That's the finale. Yeah. And the, the, like, the history of the island is like, six people have died looking for its treasure. And according to legend, one more will have to die in order to d- discover what the Oak Island treasure is. And the seventh death is all of our collective souls for having invested all of this time into your show, isn't it? Ugh. I'm kidding. I still love that show. I will say this most recent season, like they've done a better job with the pacing of the episode. It's like they'll they'll go talk to an expert or like discover a little stuff on the beach. So it's not like they don't find anything like I'm, I'm being harsh right now. But like the earlier seasons, it's like all building up to this very mediocre moment. And you're just like, oh, dude, come on. Nothing I mean, just it's, happened. It's an interesting show. Like some of the stuff that they that they uncover and, and yeah, kind of educate it. you on is I cool. I love it. Yeah, but but very large but. 
it always goes nowhere. And then they set you up the same way the next episode where it's like, okay, they found this one thing. They're going to an expert. They're getting it examined. Oh, this means X. X means Y. Y means A. Just kidding. Nothing means anything. We'll see you next week for another like treasure know, hunt of nothing. But it's not their fault. Like if production had any choice, they would have found like the most amazing stuff. You know well, and I mean? I'm also waiting for a treasure hunting show to actually yield something of like believable worth. Like for a lot of these – Hold on. You, you have put on a couple different shows. There was one where that guy – remember he fainted and he had like that like weird kind of out-of-body experience and then he woke up and he was like, where did I go? Do you remember that? No, what they're show like is they're, that? they're they're looking to dig across this river, remember? And the guy just like falls asleep on the ground. Remember? <laughs> no, I don't, you don't remember, remember that? that? Oh, this guy like falls asleep. Was it one of those like was it on Discovery? Like they're, they're like those, riding around like a boat Amazon, on these like marshlands. Yeah, Amazon. I don't remember where, mm-hmm. but they they get off the boat and they ask this like local who barely speaks English. And he's like, can we dig here? And yeah, the guy's right, basically that's like, how, that's how television The guy's works. basically like, no. <laughs> so he faints. Oh. You remember what I'm talking about? I know the show you're talking about. I don't remember the name. He of like it. passed out and then he woke up. And no, he like shivered around on the ground, but it, it all looked very, very sus. Like it didn't look like a proper, <laughs> right, guys? Any, you know, any remember, sort of human reaction to when anything. You're, when you're shooting a television show, all it takes is to walk up to a local and say, hey, can we dig here for your gold? Well, and not to mock anyone. With any sort of PTSD or anything. But like he claimed PTSD and he woke up and he's like, whoa, I thought I was, you know, back in whatever. And it all was just like, whoa, like this, this came out of nowhere. So produced. It didn't even, it like didn't even make any sense. Who knows? It could have been real, but it looked, it looked really stupid. And so that's just my example for these types of shows. I'm waiting for one of these shows to be like, okay, we think that there could be gold down in this swamp marsh cave. We're going to dig. And then episode two, they go down there and they find a mannequin made purely of gold and they have to investigate why. But at least there's something there, right? Like I feel like all of these are all just like yeah. different line and hook and sinkers for I, different – I'm know. pretty sure that that show you just referenced was called The Legend of Croc Gold on Discovery. And I – so like – uh, however long ago after it was right after this boy eating jared i started realizing how many shows there were of people looking for treasure and the first i was spoiled because the first one that i watched is also on discovery it's called cooper's treasure i think and that one was legit as fuck and also billion dollar wreck was also legit as fuck those two shows are in my opinion the exception to the treasure hunting like obviously what they, makes them legit they find, and I've seen a third one that, about looking for Templar stuff where they do find like a block of something. Um, the 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 premise of them is legit. So for like Cooper's treasure, it was this guy was an astronaut, and in the four, I, I'm getting this all wrong, but he was an astronaut at sometime in the la, in this last century, and he was actually mapping shipwrecks from space and made a tr- like a basically a treasure map of shipwrecks that you could only see from an aerial view, and he had the unique position. That's of a hell like, of a leg up. Yeah, so he would he he they literally had like. Like um, audio, you know, tapes or whatever of him in a fucking spaceship flying over the world where he would be doing his astronaut job of whatever it was he was doing. And then he would go silent over those Caribbean areas where he was like actually mapping out shipwrecks. And then, you know, because he was a fucking astronaut and an adult at that point and pretty busy, he searched for like a little bit before he died. But then he passed on the treasure map to like his son and stuff. And then his son or whoever had actually a cool story. made it his life's uh, job. So they do actually investigate a couple of those shipwrecks. You know, they find some stuff. It's not like they find yeah. a box of gold or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. But um, that one was legit. And then Billion Dollar Wreck was about this ship that had sank and they knew exactly how much money was on it that when it sank. But the only problem is that it was like feasibly too deep to dive down there. So mm. it's just about them basically getting all of the the stuff together to make this really deep dive to Isn't go that get insane? it. Like the depths of the ocean are too deep to go. Well, yeah, because of the pressure. It's like a thousand or twelve hundred feet down. Or like something. even with even with like the like like submarines and shit. With modern technology, it, it was relatively hard for them. Wow. They were facing a lot of obstacles. But that that show was also surprising because not only was the premise totally plausible and not like bullshit. 
but it was the storyline of him and his wife and this he has like a fucking eye patch i was like this is a joke this isn't real but it the it was wild like i don't even remember it but i just every time i go on discovery this app and i'm just looking for a season two because i'm like i need to know what the fuck is going on i'm very invested in that storyline but them as people was interesting mm. Cooper's Gold had like a couple of scenes where it was like him giving his dad money. Like there's clearly like some production in there being like, all right, we need a we need a storyline right now. All right, pops, get in there and ask your son for some money. It's like really scripted sort of, but the the premise is very real yeah. and the treasure is is real. The other ones that are like that show you just referenced, The Legend of Croc Gold, it's just like you can tell that they're like cast and they go down there and you know, some of the the obstacles are clearly real because they're like oh our boat fucking sank or something stupid but they focus on one tiny thing that happens yeah and, then and they're all like of a sudden become so dramatic yeah they're like panning <clears> for <throat> gold so yeah. it, the and that was also the the a lot of this is flawed that show the one where the guy faints the legend of crock gold they do address the fact that they're going into a foreign country panning for gold and that they're willing to give all of the gold and profits to the government of that country because all the rest of the shows are like we're going we're into the go amazon yeah, like the to one... go follow this this mysterious trail like, of gold there was and you're that like, one that's not yours you there can't was there do was that. that one where okay there was that one where it made me feel like it was at least a little legit because they were doing that and all of a sudden they brought up the fact that like a bunch of fucking like gangsters are after them now. <laughs> Local no, no, no. gangsters. No, no, That was Finding Escobar's Millions. That show was terrible. It was hyped up. It was on history, I think. And they, they go into Colombia. And they Columbia. start getting tailed by these by these people. Right. They go into Colombia and they had they had obviously Pablo Escobar had hidden like I think a billion dollars or something insane just all over around Colombia and the government had recovered a lot of it and with the show and they address that in that show too that they're like they were transparent we're, about yeah it. we're yeah. not because you legally cannot yeah, of, be of like course, hey guys I'm an American looking for Pablo Escobar's millions I'm just gonna come into Colombia and dig it up myself and take it home on the plane with me walk it through TSA yeah so they they do disclose in the show like we're giving it to the government we're yeah. just going there because for we content. think we have good yeah. they literally had a DJI drone they're like we have of cutting edge technology. Oh my god! They had they had okay. So they had that, a, you they were had dying a, laughing. They had a Phantom Four, the white the white DJI drone that everyone knows what it looks like. Julian except knows. they had this like fake overlay graphic of the of the film it was shooting of the ground, like right. it was clearly put in there in post production of like mapping out different subsections of different magnetisms, and it was like, dude, that's a that's a literally a so drone. You're lying like, to we me. can buy that exact, and there's no modifications to it. Like right. there was that one show where the dude put a like some sort of tracking device on the drone and. Instead of the camera, uh -huh. right? Remember that? Yes. To kind of like map out where he was and shit. And at least you could see he modified the drone. This guy, right. it was just like out of the box. Well, yeah. And it was like he was claiming that it had some like infrared or magnetic sort of map. I want that, that drone, dude. Right. I'm like, okay. Where that one at? Yeah, the military has it, but you can't buy it at Best Buy. Fuck off. Also, I'm looking at that and that's not it. <laughs> right? Know what that is. That's not it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they're like they're like talking to locals. They're trying to figure out where Pablo Escobar hid cash so they can find it, and they start getting tailed and supposedly tried to get run off the road by these like right. mysterious people who probably work for the cartel or whatever the fuck. Well, yeah, and what was frustrating about that show is that I did watch the whole thing. I believe to all of the episodes that I have available to me, they literally found nothing. Like I'm not kidding, nothing. Like at least in Oak Island, they'll find like a Templar cross or you know a fragment of bone. Interesting shit. Yeah. yeah, you're like, okay, Even you if it's, know, not it's, not, cash. it's not like a pile of gold, but like I'm into it. All right. And that's why they have had me hooked for 63 fucking episodes yeah. or whatever. Literally 63 hours. Yeah. <laughs> but like that show, they found nothing. And I was like, guys, yeah. how is this a show? It's not. How is that a show? It ain't. Watching you waste your time and create some dramatic storyline <laughs> in Colombia. I'm not into it. it I'm not into it. Literally ain't. Not into it. No. Um, but yeah, some of them are better than others, but I do like it. And I'm, you know, I've, I've, Oak Island is my first love and I am mad at them, but like, I understand, you know, and I'm here for it. Okay. Anyways, that was not, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I about. don't hate it. I just, I think it's funny. That's all. I would be very excited. Or if you guys are into those treasure shows, Cooper's gold and billion dollar wreck are actually good shows on discovery. They're very interesting. Like if I could watch billion dollar wreck over again and not know what happens, I would, I would be yeah. into it. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's a great, maybe I was being show. a little over dramatic. 
No, it's a great show. But this actually was not what we intended for this podcast. Totally not. First of all, Julian has had some, what, month-old piping hot tea that you need to spill. It's tea time with Jed and Julian. Tea time with Jed and Julian. Wait, That's I like that. Can we keep it? It's annoying at long periods of time. Julian, please set up this piping tea. Okay. We Okay, we've been meaning to share this. Well, Julian has. It's not my tea. It is piping hot. But it's really not. <laughs> Straight but, from my eyeballs. But we keep forgetting to share it on the podcast. We want... I Okay, so... Set it up, boy. I have celiac disease. I am gluten-free. So that naturally attracts me. Anyone in the spotlight or Hollywood or every, anyone of... You know, um, a public figure who has a following, who is also gluten free. I am attracted to that person in in a, in a way of like, I want to see what they're up to, right? Because mm-hmm. they're kind of representing us as celiacs or gluten free people who actually have to adhere to a diet or whatever. One of those people, his name is Mark Cuban, and if you watch Shark Tank or any of the stuff he does, or the Mavericks, the owner of the Mavericks, but he's an entrepreneur, he's a billionaire, or whatever. Um, He's very outspoken about the fact that he is gluten-free. I don't think he has celiac, but I think he's gluten-free because of a uh, gluten allergy, like mm-hmm. a serious one. Uh, invests in, I think, multiple like companies that, yeah. that are gluten-free foods or gluten-friendly, gluten-free friendly. Um, and talks about it on Shark Tank. And like will literally only take gluten-free samples of food and people will specific give, specifically give him only the stuff that he can eat. Like if they're bringing something that he can't eat, he'll literally like not eat it. Which we've always thought was like super cool and rad. And, and I like, love that. Yeah. And I love that. Because like as, as you know, that's what I try to do. Like I, I have you guys who watch me. So I try to be as outspoken as I can because for the like handful of celiac followers I have, it means kind of a lot. Yeah. Right? You guys have information and whatever. So that's how I feel about Mark Cuban. And I always looked up to the fact that he was public about it and invested in it, both with his money and his time and whatever. Um, I recently took a trip to Minnesota <laughs> for the Super Bowl and for I'm Super ready Saturday to be night. Scalded and boiled. And we were just wrapped filming our episode of our last minute trip episode. Um, and we had gone to the JLo concert. That was kind of the culmination of our la, trip. La, 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 That is the sound that JLo makes. <laughs> and we, that's the, that was the kind of culmination of filming. So we had pretty much turned off the cameras right before, like right as the concert was getting going. Um, and we had the Super Bowl tomorrow. So we were kind of relaxed. We were, um, they actually put us in this kind of, you know, for lack of a better word, like, Important people sweet. Like there's a lot of like really important people walking around. There's like Eli Manning, um, Tim Tebow, there's uh, Rami Malik, Mark Cuban. Wait, you saw Rami Malik? Yeah, Colin said hi to him in the bathroom. <gasps> That's so rad. Colin yelled at him in the okay, bathroom and said, girl. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Fangirl moment over. Keep yeah, going. there's a, a lot of you know, a lot of people of, of in Hollywood and sports or whatever. But Jerome Bettis was there. I mean, uh even Peyton Manning was there. A lot of people. Anyway. We were completely out of place. Bibiana just a of... from The Bachelor. Bibiana and Lauren were with us through the whole fucking thing, though. They like. <laughs> Colin they were... took a picture with them. <laughs> I know. They were at our meetup. They were just chilling at our meetup. I love Colin. Um, okay, keep going. Anyway, so we didn't know we were going to be in this like box with all these people. We thought we were just going to be sitting and watching the concert like everyone else. They put us in this box. Um, it's packed with people. And I see Mark Cuban. And I actually, before I saw him, someone was like, Mark Cuban's here. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, I like him. He's gluten free. Fuck yeah. So I decided to like take a lap around the room um, to go get a drink, but also just like, yeah, see what's going on. Mm-hmm. So I leave my railing kind of spot. This concert really hasn't really gone going yet. So I leave my railing spot. I walk around. I see Mark Cuban and he looks magical and real like a person. And he's, I think he has some makeup on. He, you know, he looks like TV ready or whatever. And Probably. he walks, I'm, I'm like walking around the room. I kind of stop and get my drink and I'm sitting there and he walks over across to where this, the the food was, like the snacks and the food on the table. And I had already investigated and known for a fact that I couldn't eat anything because it was, it was literally like there was pasta and then there was like seafood, you know, little um, hors d'oeuvres. And then there was like sandwiches. And I was like, right. okay, I'm not going to eat here or whatever. Right. So he walks over and someone points at the food to him and and he's like showing him food. And so he takes a piece of food and he eats it and it looks like a sandwich. And for, for me, I was like, wait a minute. Holy shit, I'm stupid. How did I miss that? Like there's gluten-free food over there. Even if it's not vegan, I didn't see the gluten-free sign of of what he's eating because I know that he's eating gluten-free food right now, right? He's Mark Cuban. So I, I'm like, for lack of a better word, looking at him from across the room. 
I watch him take a bite of the sandwich and I see where he gets it from, like which tray he took it from. So as he leaves, I let him like clear out and I'm like waiting and waiting till it's like appropriate and not stalkery. So I walk right where he was, not to like collect his napkin or whatever, but I walk to where he was because he took his napkin. I would have taken it if he didn't. Stop. I'm joking. And I look at the sandwich tray that he just took a sandwich off of. And sure enough, it is a straight up regular bread, not gluten-free sandwich. Kidding, okay. Which is it, Mr. Cuban? <laughs> is it gluten or is it gluten free? Tell me what's going on Tell here. Tell me what's going on. Okay, I want to be really delicate though, because I do know that I do not have celiac disease. You do. Well, it I, is I, let, me, let me finish. Yeah. I, 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 I want to address that in the story, in okay. part of the story. Okay. I, it's a good point. But what I said to Jenna, and I called her that night after uh, the concert or whatever, I was like, by the way, I got something to tell you. And I told her that story, and she loved it. She was like, oh my God, laughing. the tea. She was laughing. But I said, one thing I do know, though, is he has not ever declared that he has celiac disease. Right. So it's not like a person who has once claimed that they are, they have a, a literal genetic disease, which isn't even disease. It's like the way they – it's like called celiac disease, but they, it's actually not even like technically a disease. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a genetic it's like predisposition a to an yeah. autoimmune disorder, really. Yeah. And if you have celiac disease and you don't adhere to a 100% gluten-free diet, that's bad. And it's 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 not good for your body. It's Destroys not good if you're, your lower intestines. Yeah, your body attacks itself. It, the only cure for that right now is a gluten free diet, and luckily it's a perfect cure, right? Most people with celiac adhere to a hundred percent gluten free diet, and a, a, aside from the, the times when uh, you know restaurants aren't on us or whatever, they can be okay. There's no pain. It's different than like something like Crohn's disease, which is like very very more right. complicated. Right. So I said. I know he doesn't have celiac disease, so I don't want to just jump on him. He might have a mild gluten allergy that right. he might have, like, you know, brought into the spotlight at times, but maybe the allergy has kind of died down since then. Who knows? Like, it's very possible that he just, like, outgrew it or something, right? Totally possible. But I did think it was really funny. And but it's also it's also a thing because you have celiac disease. I do not. But I've been exposed because of you to a lot of different attitudes about celiac disease, gluten intolerance, gluten allergy. Like, But there, let's agree because I think that you know that these people exist too, that there are people – that have different levels of gluten intolerance all the way up to celiac disease that sometimes are hungry or out or wherever. And they, and will, they, just say, Fuck they it. will eat gluten. Yeah. It is possible that Mark Cuban was just so hungry that he needed to eat something and just said fuck it in that moment. Which, again, as a celiac, Which we're not I can't trying relate to, shame. to that. Yeah, but as a person with that. a gluten allergy of different levels, varying reaction levels, right. I can't speak to that. I don't right. know what that's like. Right. But it, either way, we're not trying to shame him or anything. I just thought it was so. No, I funny. love Mark Cuban. <laughs> yeah, dude, but it's boy, just, do it whatever just, you want. It was just and the, funny. It the was fact that the fact that he's been so visible about gluten and it just as a whole, as a billionaire, as like a cool guy, you know, it's just so rad. It's a win-win for everybody. But we just laughed so hard that Julian was like, "Oh, sick! There's gluten-free sandwiches here." And then he walks over. And yeah, and you know what? You know, <laughs> honestly, this this could be if you're if you're hardcore into it and you want to call me out. This this could technically be the pot calling the kettle black because there was a time, you know, in the um, this this last year in 2017, I did like a sort of a study on my own yeah. where I found this gluten free blog, and it was basically this guy who tested beers for different level of gluten, and I decided to go off of the tests that he had had done on mm-hmm. the beers and and give it a shot, like t- taste beers, drink a beer that isn't technically gluten free, but under his parts tests per million, have yeah. lower than 20 parts per million or close to 20 parts per million, which is technically the gluten free standard. It just can't be labeled as gluten free, whatever. Right. Um, and I, I did get in trouble with some people online, especially in the gluten-free community because I was drinking beer and I, I was doing it on, online right. for people to see. And I get that that's a bad example. But at the same time, I was pretty I was pretty open about the fact that I was doing kind of like a yeah, study. Yeah, you, where you got that study information from. Yeah. But also, I will say though too, you a couple of those beers that you drank yourself that were technically low enough parts per million to be gluten-free, just couldn't be labeled gluten-free, you didn't feel like super great after you drank a couple of those beers. Yeah, one of them made me pretty sick, actually. Yeah. One of them made me pretty sick. And I then that's pretty... where your journey ended And that's there. when it stopped. Yeah, for real. Because <laughs> yeah. I had done like three or four. And then on one of the last ones, I was like, I, I was it's drinking, drinking. It. The next day I got so fucking sick. I was like, okay, this study's over. Playtime's up. Like, it's right. got real. 
Yeah. But I mean, if you're Julian and you've been, or a celiac and you've been celiac for 10 plus years now, like sometimes it's just exciting when you get that information and no one's knocking you and no one's knocking Mark Cuban if he ate a fucking sandwich that's made with gluten. No, this is also kind of like jokey too. It was just funny and we were just laughing and I was like, Julian, you got to spill that pipe of hot tea, boy. (laughs) Yeah. Plus, I'm also pretty sure that we've seen him eat things with gluten on Shark Tank and I'm just like, whatever. It's possible. Who cares? It's possible. Again, it, again, Shark Tank has spanned over what ten years. Yeah, his, he might have outgrown that al- that allergy. Like, it's possible, and it's it's a difficult subject to like address after the fact. Be like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm not. You know what I mean? <laughs> by the way, guys, I can eat gluten now. Yeah. <laughs> it, either way, he's been really cool about being gluten free and done a lot for that. Yeah, it's as true. As a whole, so, and it was cool that I got to be in the room with, with Mark, Mark Cuban, Cuban. Right? Shout out to Direct TV Now for putting me in that room. Oh, and speaking of Direct TV Now. That segue after you spilled tea. Direct TV now, guys, is the best way to watch TV right from your phone, right from your Roku, right from your Apple TV devices, anywhere in your house, wherever you are. You need to pop on and watch some live TV. You need to watch some SVU. You need to watch some The Challenge. Uh, check it out. It's directtvnow.com, okay? You can watch on your phone or tablet. You can cast straight to your devices. There's no cable boxes or satellites or, or, or any long-term Jeez. contracts. It's all the nonsense about traditional, uh, you know, cable and, and, and satellite models that just, like, turns people off. And it's clunky. This is new and this is sleek and you, you're not locked in. There's no long-term contract. Uh, you can start with $35 and get over 60 live TV channels right to your phone, or you go bump it up a little bit and get 120 live TV channels like ESPN, Disney, MTV, History Channel, all the good stuff, all right? We personally have a handful of shows that we watch. I love, like I said, The Challenge, SVU, Channel Watches Her, Curse Curse of Oak Oak Island. Island. (laughs) They don't find something, Julian, stop it. They're never going to find anything, but if you want to believe that they are, you can watch it on your phone with Direct TV now. It's a really great app. Check it out. That's D I R E C T V now. There's one T. Check it out. DirectTVnow.com or click the link in our description. And when you're done watching TV, go brush your teeth and do it with Quip. Because Quip (laughs) is this new electric toothbrush, packs the perfect amount of vibrations. It's high tech, it's low cost, it's sleek, it's wonderful. And they ship the refills of the the, uh, refill packs like for the brush itself. Because the brush head, it diminishes over time. You can't just use the same brush head over time. That's, That's nasty. Quip is nice because it says, hey, we know that you can't use the same brush head over time, so we're going to ship you. in this you. house, we don't go to the store. We don't go to the store. <laughs> so if you're a Postmate fan or you like to get shit delivered and not leave your house, you stay in your house, just get Quip. <laughs> they send you the refill packs. So you're like, hi, mailman. Thank you. And then you pop it on, brush your teeth. Good as new. Look how shiny you want my teeth are. Right? It's great. And it doesn't cost hundreds of dollars like the other ones. Look at my teeth right now. It's amazing. I can't see them. Your mustache is yeah, covering look. them. It's right here. Got it. This is what Quip does. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> right now, guys, go to getquip.com. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash Jen and Julian. You should think about getting a subscription plan, which refreshes your brush on a dentist recommended schedule. It's backed by science, y'all. Delivering a new brush head every three months for just $5, including free shipping worldwide. Starts at just $25 for the initial product. And you get your first refill pack for free with our code. Getquip.com slash Jenna Julian. Check it out. And then have fresh breath. The end. <clears throat> All right, Julian. What are we doing? What are we doing to finish this thing? Well, so as many of you know, but probably not all of you. Because it's not like YouTube shows us any love. You know what I'm saying? Even though we mutually agreed this was a good idea. Uh, I have done a Sirius XM show uh, called the YouTube 15 for years now. I think it's been since like 2014 or something. I don't know. I, I think it's probably since 2014. It's, it's been at least three years. Maybe four. Um, I'll look it up right now. That was T. Uh, that was T. Was, Yet you follow us? Gonna, oh, my God. <gasps> Stop. Yeah, this is going to take way too long on my phone because they're all here. But I've done a, a Series 6M show called the U215, um, and we basically play whatever's the top 15 trendiest songs from YouTube that week on the radio, which is really cool. Like, we've played YouTubers. We've played Thanksgiving songs. K-pop. Like, yeah, K-pop. Like, all this stuff that you wouldn't traditionally hear on an American pop radio station. If it's trending, we play it. 
And I think it's just such a cool, it was like when they asked me if I wanted to do it, I was like, I have no experience in radio. I don't, I don't know how to do that. You know, and they're like, who cares? And just do it. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) like, feel free to fire me whenever you want. And I've been waiting. And they're just like, you still hired. And I'm like, sounds good to me. Like I, I enjoy doing it. It's really fun. And, um, I just think it's such a cool way to break down that barrier of like, independent artists don't have to do all this crazy stuff to get played on the radio that if you're trending you trend and And a lot of times you you bring songs out and you beat them to radio absolutely and then they come on a radio like a couple months later and i was like wait a minute i heard that song on the show a little while ago and um anyway that's it i just wanted to say that i record (laughs) (laughs) i record that show every thursday and that's like right after my video day on Wednesday. We do it right here, actually. Yeah, we record a lot right of you here. guys know that I stay up super late, like because I'm just you know to shoot, edit, upload all in one day is a mess of a schedule that I never recommend it to anyone, and yet I keep doing it. Do uh, as I say, not as I do. Yeah, for real. Um, but then Thursday morning, I wake up and I write my radio show every single week. So what I do is I get a list from SiriusXM of the music. They curate it. I don't actually handpick all of the songs, obviously, because it needs to go by a certain algorithm of trending and they do try to keep it like you know instead of having everything be new that week like there's some songs that they want to keep trying to like you know see what lands a little bit um so they send me the list and then i write the show so it's basically like i'll go on people's twitter accounts or like try and figure out who all the artists are and for some of these people there's no information on them because they're just like a soundcloud artist that has like a few songs on soundcloud and that's it but you have to get a little creative sometimes about like filling in this this break of introducing this person um but also as a radio host that's generally what you're doing is like you're between songs, mm-hmm. aka the break, is you're giving some sort of commentary about the last song or about what you think about the new song coming up or about just a personal anecdote about either. So it's like, yeah. Jenna, that's the time she spends putting into the show is like right. writing that out. And it's not live. So I have time to sit and do all my research and find all that stuff and then actually physically write a show out. And then when we record it, I'm like reading off of what I've written before. It's not like I'm a live DJ and I'm sitting here playing the song and then talking about yeah. it. And Because a lot of people think that we're in New York playing it every week. She flies to New York for I fly, 24 hours I fly to New York week. every Thursday. Doesn't that sound like Jenna? <laughs> yeah. Um, so – a lot of times when I'm writing my show, I'm like tired, loopy, but it helps because it makes it silly and fun and lighthearted and stuff. But I'll be like around the house writing my show and Julian, I'll be like, Juliet, come help me write my show. And I'll be like, Carmen, can you help me write my show? Like, help me write my show, Carmen. It's just a joke. So last week, Julian was also pretty tired and loopy and I was playing a song because it was on the show. So I'm watching the music video. I'm like reading the description and reading the comments, reading the feedback. And he just comes in and does this fake fucking impression of me. Like, I'm recording it, like, saying something about it. And I was like, oh, boy, are you making fun of me? Like, what the fuck was that? And you used to work in radio. How dare you? How dare you? How even dare you? So I was like, okay, Julian, let's make a fun game where you are now the host of the YouTube 15 on Sirius XM, playing you the hottest running music according to YouTube this week. I'm Jen Marbles. (laughs) Haha, listen to the show. (laughs) Okay, so Julian, I want you to pick a year and a month and Mm. I will pull up the actual show and you can do the whole thing and, and make it whatever you want. We don't have a soundboard for you, though. But March I don't have a 2016. Soundboard. March 2016. Let's look it up. I'm interested to see what was trending that week. March 1st? Okay. Would you like March 1st? That March 30th? March 9th? March 1st. March 1st. Okay. I'm ready for March 1st. This is my time to shine, baby. Uh, oh, no. This is what I wrote. Let me find you the actual show. Uh, how do I find this? It's in a folder. Wait, if I just search for it, it's just like spam from my email. <laughs> Let me look in a folder. It doesn't matter. I could take any of the nah, lists. I like kill it. it with all it's of them. fun. It's fun. <clears throat> YouTube 15 is the folder. All right. I just have to go back a year. March. What? That's three, right? All right. And you want March 1st. Hold on, just give me one second. I'm almost there. You have time. Here you go. This is this says March fourth. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, well, you tell me. Do you need to look at some of these songs first? Because no, let's see what, exactly how we did it before. Okay. Just play it, and I'm going to get going. But then you don't know the next song is what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? I guess. I'm going to have to show you the next song. Okay, all right. If you even know what it is. Okay. All right. So Julian's going to do this live, which I do not do, but you, this is what you asked for. You asked for it. The, the men wanted it. So I don't know what they play sort of before it, but it, sometimes it's different stuff. But it's like, and now the YouTube 15 with Jenna Marbles playing you the highest training music according to YouTube this week. And then it's like, dun, 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 and they play a little breaks or whatever. And go. Hey, guys. Happy Thursday. Or welcome to the YouTube 15, as I like to say. That's when I record the show. <laughs> it's me. I'm in my house. It's Jenna Marbles. Do you guys ever post my food? I do it a lot. <laughs> For... <laughs> Starting off the show this week, I have up oh, my dog breathing into the mic. Isn't that you? <laughs> That's him. Isn't he cute? <laughs> I'm like so offended <laughs> that you think I do any of this. Keep going. Um, we're live. Anyway, guys, this we're going to start the this show is off. your first song. Oh, can I see it? <laughs> Anyway, guys, the hottest couple, in my opinion of all time, Rihanna and Drake. Whether or not it's real, I like to believe it. I don't know about you. Hee <laughs> hee. Here comes their song to start off the show. We have Rihanna featuring Drake, Work. Ref, ref. How did I do? Oh. Hold on. We got we to gotta play the song now. Now I have to listen to the whole thing. Okay, so that plays. And then it ends. I'm so, like... I'm hot in the face. <laughs> like, this is so offensive. Play at the end. Play the end so it goes out. And I... Okay, Julian, I'll play the end. Yeah, I gotta t take me out with it. Stop, stop. Wait, but then the next yeah. song plays. Then this plays. Oh, stop to... grabbing the phone from me. Then this song plays. This is March 2016. Makes sense. That's the end. Who is it? I need to know this song. Okay. Stop grabbing the phone from me. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. 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 I got to go back to the email. There you okay. go. That's your next song. Okay. That's where you just came from. Hold on, but go back to the YouTube app. It's going to play another song. Okay. Hey, guys. That was Daya and the Chainsmokers. Don't let me down. And make sure you listen to the YouTube 15 <laughs> every Saturday and Sunday, repeating on repeat every single day. <laughs> of the week. Guys, I love Daya. I love me some Daya, but you know what I love more than me is Daya mac and cheese, which is a vegan brand of mac and cheese I like. Guys, I cook it at my house where I am right now, singing on the YouTube 15. Here's my dog. Beep, beep. Okay, coming up next. Oh my God! Coming up next, we got some Halsey singing Colors, even though the video is black and white. The song is called Colors. Not really sure about that decision, but here we go. Halsey, aka Ashley, up next. How's that? Am I doing good? <gasps> what? This is so... I'm like insulted. <laughs> Wait, is it really filmed in black and white? Or it's just a really grayscale? Okay, so this plays and then... Hi. What? There's no like you're listening to the YouTube 15 on Hits 1? No, there's no break in between those. Then it's the next one. Oh, you mean... I see what you're saying. Ooh, good song. Don't mess the show up. Hey guys, it's Jenna Marbles, <laughs> and that was and that was guys, and that was Jenna Justin Marbles. Bieber with "Sorry." No. <laughs> okay, I'll start again. I'll start. I'll start. Hey guys, I'll do that it's again. Jenna I'll do that one again. <laughs> again, I'll do that one again. Oh man, I wish I had a group of people that looked that good that held up a sign that said I heart Jenna Marbles instead of I heart JB. Anyway, this is the YouTube 15. You're listening to me, Jenna Marbles. <laughs> that was Justin Bieber with Sorry from Purpose the Movement. What a great dance video. I wish I could dance that well, but I probably can't. But I'll try. If you want to watch me, I'm on YouTube at Jenna Marbles. <laughs> Coming up next. I literally we, introduced coming, myself at the top of the show and coming that's up, it. Coming up next, I'm Jenna Marbles. <laughs> Coming up next, I'm Jenna Marbles, and this is a great 
song coming up next because it is acoustic, all right? This is one of my favorite versions of Mr. John Bellion because he relates to all of us when we are at an all-time low. Everyone, this is All Time Low by John <laughs> Bellion coming up right now on the YouTube 15. Acoustic. <laughs> Okay, then play next is Mason. That was Pia Mia, Pia Mia, do it again, featuring Chris Brown and Tyga. My favorite part of that is when they drive the white Jeep all over the beach. It makes me feel like I'm on vacation with them, but I'm not. I'm here singing the YouTube 15 with you guys right here on Sirius XM. Hits one. <laughs> Coming up next is a band that I can't stop listening to, and I wish I, I wish I, have them play my, play in my house live all the time. That's not an English sentence. This is the 1975. My favorite thing ever. It's the sound of the 1975, which leads me to this song, "The Sound" by the 1975. This is YouTube thing here. The one that hits one. I'm doing a <laughs> That was Pillow Talk with Zane. Guys, I don't know about you, but I would love to do some Pillow Talking with Zane. Or honestly, Pillow Talking with anyone, including my dogs. I have three of them. I'm Jenna Marbles, and you're listening to the YouTube 15 on Hits 1. <sighs> Up next, we have Dylan Francis featuring Kygo. Come over featuring James Hersey. That's her It's featuring two people, actually. I, I didn't read that right. But anyway, Dylan Francis is a cool guy. Really funny guy on Snapchat. He actually hosted HQ Trivia once. Speaking of HQ Trivia, are you guys playing tonight? You going to be in for the prize? Let me know. I'm at Jenna underscore Marbles on Twitter. I'd love to engage with you. The uh, oh. Coming up next, it's a great party song, great video, and here it is. Dylan Francis never lets us down. What a great guy. Dylan, <laughs> like your song says, we're coming over now. See you soon. Coming up next is, this is a song. There's a time lapse in the beginning, I like it. It's crazy. That was Prince Royce featuring the one and only Jennifer Lopez. Back it up. And Pitbull, because he's in everything on the YouTube 15 Hits 1. <laughs> Guys, I'm Jenna Marbles, and I personally love the merging of young artists with um, established legends like J-Lo. And, the, and they come together so well. That was Back It Up. One of my favorite J-Lo songs of all time, even though it's Prince Royce's song. Thank you guys for listening. Coming up next, we have... Katie B, Craig David, Major Laser. Who am I? Well, I'm Jenna Marbles, but who are they asking? I don't know. This is Who Am I featuring Major Laser. I'm Jenna Kerr Marbles on Snapchat. <laughs> what? I'm trying to be the most obnoxious version of you. Is it's that okay? Not any version of me. Oh, it's a version of you. Oh my God. Hello? Is it you? Yeah, that's right. You are. You're listening to the YouTube 15 on Hits 1. That's what Adele was asking. She was asking if you were here listening to the show. Anyway, guys, love me some Adele, especially when I cry myself to sleep, but I still love her. This is That was Adele saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> For uh, a lot of million people have heard her say it. It's a great song. The whole thing looks like it was filmed in a dream, which I love. They achieved that cinematic look. I'm Jenna Marbles. Coming up next, we have Joel Adams, Please Don't Go. This is a great video. I've never watched it. It looks like it's a great video. 
There's some uh, magic happening. It's see, it's please don't go. Mm, the best part of this song is if you hum along with it, it sounds like you're that good at humming. Mm, mm, mm. Do you hear that? It's an illusion. Anyway, YouTube 15 hits one. They're in the forest. Please don't go. Official music video. Generals. Are you okay? No. What? What, are, okay. what happened? That was Sagala, Easy Love on the YouTube 15 Hits One. I'm Jenna Marbles. Wow, if I could dance that good as a kid, I would have been a dancer <laughs> as an adult and as a kid. They're really good at dancing in that video. If you haven't watched it, it's a really good video because it's just children dancing very good, very well. They're good at it. Their parents are probably very proud of them. Shouts out to their parents and their dance teachers. We have one more song to close the show. It is the wonderful Post Malone, guys. Post Malone, a.k.a. Austin, a.k.a. The White Iverson. This is White Iverson on the YouTube 15 Hits 1. Post Malone, we love you. Papa Bless, we know you hang out with Ethan and Neela. We have been on their podcast. We know them. What the hell is we this? are friends with the same people. What the Con hell? Congrats on all your success. I love your tattoos, and this is a great... Oh, and it's saying Post Malone is on tour tw June 21st at the San Diego Cal Coast Credit Union. It's advertising tickets on YouTube. That's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, Post Malone taking us into the weekend. Here is White, I White Iverson. <clears throat> Thanks, Post, for taking us into the weekend. That was a great song. I'm sure all of you have heard it, but if you haven't checked out, the video is pretty cool. He's just doing donuts in the desert with his car. It looks really fun and reckless. My kind of weekend, am I right? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun. I'm here all week, every week, every single day, broadcasting live from my home with my dogs. <laughs> I'm Jenna Marbles. I'll catch you guys on the internet next time. Squeaky, squeaky. <clears throat> Every Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm here with you. Download the app. It's called Die With Me. <laughs> I have cute dogs. I'm just, I don't, I don't even know where to begin. I'm like first and foremost insulted. Why? <laughs> Why? What did I do? The... That you think I introduced myself that many times. <laughs> this has never been about me th thinking you do any of that. It's my version of it. True. Okay. I was hoping a little bit that you were going to do the show as you and not me, but amazing. We can do that. We can run it back. No, I'm really okay. Thank you. Did, it, did I trigger you? Overall, it was a really wonderful job. Sorry. Too. I didn't mean to be, I didn't mean to be too much. Was that too much? No, you were just, I'm hot. That was just enough. That was great. With, I am, uh, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. You're not mad at me? No, I'm not mad at you. Subscribe. I think she's mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. I, I Like when I walked in the other day, basically, like someone was singing a lyric that was like, I don't know how many dollars I make. And I was like, she doesn't know how many dollars. She doesn't know how many dollars she makes. Ha <laughs> ha. What IRS? You're coming for her? Anyway, I'm Jenna Miles. This is YouTube 15. It was, it was so some dumb obnoxious. shit like that. So I was just trying to be like the obnoxious radio host version of it you. It was amazing. <laughs> I really, I really liked that. You know what's fun though is that if we're ever on a car trip, we just have years worth of shows that you can go through and and do that for me. Yeah, because oh, it yeah. makes me laugh. Serious moment, really quick. If you haven't listened to the show. Jenna does an incredible job as a person who's not a radio host and doesn't make it sound radio-y. She makes it sound yeah, honest, that's straightforward, that's but like very cool, not trying to be anything. Aww, it's see. a really fun show. I'm serious. Like it's one, coming from the radio world, watching you thrive so well on such a huge and, and massively respected platform like SiriusXM to the point where they've made spinoff shows about your show is a really, really proud thing for me. And I'm, I'm really excited for all of your success. Oh, and if you yeah. haven't listened to the show, I'm telling you, it's a great show. And you're going to learn music before most of your friends do. Oh, you're sweet. And I do sit right next to her while she records. So when she's telling jokes to the yeah. show, there is one person listening to the jokes. It's not just you. I get to hear them too. There, in the past, I have done like joke, dad joke specials mm -hmm. sort of. In, for like holidays and you stuff. You like those. I like those. 
What was that one dad joke you told that I could not handle? <laughs> when I, it was something when I was like, he talks to women like a Klingon or something like that. Oh, you made a Star Trek joke. Yeah, and I made it was a Star so Trek bad. joke. Because <laughs> there, there was that one clip that you had just recently watched of Worf being like, ah! <laughs> that is how Klingons greet women. <laughs> no, that is how Klingons lure a mate. Yeah. Yeah. And it made you laugh. And then I Snapchat it. I was like, when Jen is in the mood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, that was really nice of you to say that. That was fun, though. Did you have fun? Yeah. Well, hopefully you guys got a kick out of Jenna um, furiously, angrily laughing at, at my terrible impression of her. It's also a really fun game, though. If you just pull a bunch of, like, YouTube videos or, like, songs together and make your friends pretend that they're radio hosts and, and laugh we, at yeah. them, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, that's actually really funny. It's actually a really fun game. We could do this again. You know who would be good at this game? Jeff, Jeff. Cyrus. <laughs> we need to have him as a friend of the show, officially. Official friend we of the show. We should bring him on. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, we had some other stuff we were going to talk about, but we ran out of time. We will move on. We want to talk about, like, we did a gaming tournament, and it was really fun. But we it was can... our first esports gaming yeah. tournament, BB. It was a lot of fun. BB. Anyway. We came in 10th place. 10th place, y'all. Top Top 10. Twitch Rivals team right here. You're looking at them. Out of 16, but 10th place nonetheless. Hey, hey baby. I'll take you, baby. Speaking of T, I'm not going to mention anything else <laughs> about that tournament. Uh, um, thank you guys for hanging out for another week. We appreciate it. We will be live on Twitch throughout the week. Check us out there. And um, make sure you check out the YouTube 15 on Hits 1. It airs Fridays and Saturdays? Yeah. Fridays and Saturdays and on the Sirius XM app. You can get a free trial. Go to SiriusXM.com slash Hits1 slash YouTube 15, but like Hits1, you can get a free subscription That's to Sirius so, yeah. for like a limited time. For Check out her show. It's I awesome. Think, yeah. Thank you guys for hanging out. We love yeah, you. Yeah, it was fun. Now we're going to go and um, watch TV and probably eat some food. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, just enjoy life. Have a good day, guys. You guys have a wonderful one. Bye. Bye.